is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a marvelous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, I'm going to jump right into it. This woman is a racist, and everybody is calling for her resignation except the Negroes. And by Negroes, I mean American descendants of slavery, black people that live in Los Angeles who know her and who work with her. Her name is Nori Martinez, and she is the president of the Los Angeles City Council. She has received backlash from just about every responsible person in Los Angeles for recordings in which she made racist and derogatory comments during a conversation with two of her colleagues and a high-profile labor leader. Now this happened back in October of 2021. The Hispanics or Latinos or whatever they call themselves were having a meeting and they were discussing redistricting in Los Angeles and they were also discussing who would replace a councilman who had been indicted for some kind of federal charges but he represented a black district and they as a coalition of four were trying to decide who they were going to support to replace this person I guess until they had a special election so this meeting was attended by four Latinos three of them are on the Los Angeles City Council and one of them is the president of the Los Angeles County Federation of Labor. These people are discussing things directly affecting their people, the Latino people. I really want to make this clear. Now, these are the four people that were present at that meeting from left to right. Nori Martinez, Kevin DeLeon, and Gil Sedello. These people are on the city council. The last one is Ron Herrera. He's not on the city council, but he does have a powerful position in Los Angeles. So this gang of four was having a meeting before the meeting. Now let me make it clear. This meeting was recorded without the knowledge of some of these people. Now either one of these people did the recording or the place that they met was bugged. And in a place like Los Angeles, either could be true. It's not important who did the recording if one of them did the recording because I think the people of Los Angeles can be grateful for that person because these people need to be exposed. But by deductive reasoning, we might be able to figure out which one of them did the recording. They were discussing who was going to replace Mark Ridley Thomas, who is a black city council member who has been indicted on federal charges for something. So apparently the city council is going to appoint an interim person until they can have a special election or until the next election. So they are trying to figure out who would be the best black person to ally with them. There are 15 members of the Los Angeles City Council. Three of them are black. But they decided to add this white city councilman, Mike Bonin, onto the black list. He is in a same-sex marriage, and they've adopted a black child. So they decided that he's in with the blacks, so we'll just count him as black. That was the first racist thing. Now, as a sidebar, this heifer decided to take on the child accused him of being disruptive during a parade. A parade. Apparently there was a MLK parade in 2017 and Mike Bonham brought his son, two years old at the time. And she said he was just acting like a little monkey. And she went on to say that they were on the float and his behavior was so terrible that he almost upset the float and turned the float over. Now, you're going to wrap your mind around all these grown, heavy people on the float, but a two-year-old almost tipped the float over. She said, he needed a beat down. I should have taken him around the corner and brought him back. She also went on to say that they were raising this little boy like he was a white child. And then this Kevin De Leon person said they were treating the baby like he was an accessory. I'm not sure how they treat their children, but a two-year-old is still a baby. And these are two white men raising a black child. Think of it what you may. They don't know any other way to raise him but as a white child since they're white people. But the question is, why is this child 
of importance to her. What does he have to do with his daddy being on the city council? And she went on in another place in the conversation, referred to him as referred to him as some kind of little negrito, whatever they say that's in Spanish. The people who translated it said it was a slur. So basically, she called the baby a little nigger. Now, so far, I have read six different accounts of this conversation between these Latino people. And I'm coming away with the resentment vibes. This woman seems to be resentful of the fact that these two white men adopted a black baby. This black baby is triggering this woman. And I'm wondering what her conversation would be if they had adopted a white baby or a Latina baby. But it's this black baby. It always comes back to anti-blackness. This grown woman sitting in a responsible position is so small-minded and insecure and jealous that she cannot show grace to a two-year-old child. She seems to be jealous that this white man is taking care of that child the way the child is supposed to be taken care of. And if that baby was on a float, he was acting like any two-year-old baby. Now, this is typically where black people usually go into this, woe is me, everybody hates us, why do they treat us like They treat us like that because there's power in us that we don't see. It used to be those Hollywood types, and this is a rich white man. These people are rich. These two white men are rich. It used to be they were going to China, and they were going to Russia, and they were going to this place and that. Now, all of a sudden, it's like the man said almost, the accessory now is a black child. And so, yes, the popular baby to adopt now is a black baby. So, deal with it. Now, I'm going to get back to the other racist stuff that they said in this meeting. When they were discussing whether or not they should support the Los Angeles County District Attorney, whose name is George Gascon, who is also Latina, but he's Cuban, a white Cuban, I would add. She said that he wasn't worthy of their support. And then she said, F that guy, he's with the blacks. So she's got a problem with black people. During this conversation also, they were discussing redistricting. They were trying to decide where Koreatown began and where it ended. Specifically, according to this report, they wondered where the Shadow Place and Lafayette Park are in Koreatown. Okay, this heifer says, I see a lot of little short, dark people in Koreatown. She's talking about a group of people that they call Oaxicans. I never heard of this before. That these people live in Mexico and in the United States. And these are, I guess, the short, darker Mexicans that we see working. She said, I don't know where these people are from. I don't know what village they came from, how they got here. And then she added, they're ugly. So I'm going to call this the colorism factor. They're ugly because they're short and dark and racist. Now this woman is the major racist. This, this, this Martinez woman is the major racist here. So now we need to assess the involvement of these three men. Kevin DeLeon was the one that said the child was being treated as an accessory and said that Mike Bonner thought he was black because the child was black. Herrera, who is the labor guy, only said they need to appoint people who are going to ally with the Latino community. Now, he, they were all a part of this and they heard this woman doing all of this racist talk. But that's the, their involvement. Now, the third guy, Sadella on the end, didn't say anything. Now, when we're trying to decide who may have taped this meeting, okay, it might have been him. Deductive reasoning would suggest that he did the taping because he didn't say anything. He knew it was being taped. But the bottom line is, whoever did it, whoever exposed these people, did the city of Los Angeles a service because these people need to be outed, especially this woman. And most of the people who commented on this had the same concern I did. Why was she obsessed with this black child? And I believe the unanswered question in her mind was, why did they adopt a black baby? In a swift case of justice, as I am recording this, I'm reading that she has resigned as president of the Los Angeles City Council. So she's been pressured out. It doesn't say 
whether or not she resigned as a member of the city council just as the president. She'll probably try to hang on, but it probably won't be easy. They've all apologized, as they always do when they've got caught. This Martinez woman claimed she was frustrated and it was an intense meeting and all of that, and that's why she said those things that she shouldn't have said. Well, if the meeting was intense, it was because she was making it intense. Kevin DeLeon said there were comments made in the context of this meeting that are wholly inappropriate and I regret appearing to condone and even contribute to certain insensitive comments made about a colleague and his family in private. And he had reached out to Mike Dunnan, but the thing about it is he's talking about the man's child. So whether or not this kind of apology is even going to be accepted would be in question, I would think. And then Herrera said that I didn't really say anything offensive, but I should have said something. I sat there and listened and didn't say anything. And Sadella, the one that didn't say anything, said he also should have intervened. Now, what this tells me, especially about Sadella, is that he knows this woman is a racist. And he knew that eventually she was going to be called out and he didn't want to get caught up in it. I don't know why I'm projecting this, but that's what most people would do. I know this person is a racist. He's probably heard her say racist things in the past. And so he's decided that I'm just going to let everybody know what's going on with this woman. He may not even like her either. But these people know this woman is a racist and they're going along with her. And you cannot go along with people when they're wrong because you can get caught up in their mess like these men did. And I'm still reeling over the fact that she said the baby needed to be beat down, a two-year-old. And not that they should do it, his parents, but that she should take him around the corner and beat him down. That person is consumed with resentment and jealousy toward black people. That she would take all of that out on a baby, that's a sign of a problem. From my reading, it appeared that the African American community in Los Angeles wanted this woman out, totally out. But the elected officials of the African American community were calling for something like an investigation. Karen Bass, who is presently in the United States Congress representing Los Angeles, is running for mayor of Los Angeles. Two of these people, the main culprits in this meeting, endorsed her. So she didn't want to call for their resignation. So she called for an investigation. Now what that looks like is that she wants their support and the Hispanic vote. But she wasn't going to call for these people's resignation and risk losing votes. Also disturbing was the fact that this woman, Nara Martinez, seems to have her fingers in the eyes of black people. She seemed to be the type of person who can skin and grin in your face and stab you in the back. She said she worked for Herb Wesson. He's an African American who's either on the city council or has been on the city council. And she seemed to have a cozy enough relationship with him that she thought that he could vouch for her. The work she did for him speaks for itself. Now there is a real estate developer named Rick Caruso who is also running for mayor. They're not supporting him because he says that the Los Angeles City Hall is broken and he's going to clean things up. So they don't want him in because they want to continue to do what they're doing, which is supporting their own people. So this saga seems to be coming to an end. She has had to resign and she's very apologetic and now she knows better and she's going to hold herself to a higher standard. This woman is 40 something years old, rounded to the nearest 10, 50. If she doesn't know any better by now, she will never know any better. But I want to show you something. These two women bear a striking resemblance to each other. The woman on the left is Nary Martinez, and the woman on the right is Vanessa Bryant, Kobe Bryant's widow. Now, the reason I'm putting these side by side is because these women fit the standard of beauty that have been set by America. A lot of black people like these people. A lot of black men like these women. They like the way they look. But these people are culturally different from black people. And these people operate in the best interest of themselves and their people. The woman on the left skinned and grinned and worked her way all the way up to the president of the Los Angeles City Council. And I can assure you she did that with a lot of help from black people 
on that city council and other government officials because one of the black city councilmen was stunned. He said, these are just not the people that I thought they were. No, because you weren't paying attention. Those people operate in their own interest and you don't. That's the difference. And Vanessa Bryant on the right, um, a lot of people really seem to think she's a sacred cow. You can't say anything about her. But we can look at how she treated Kobe Bryant's parents, not only at his death, but before. And some people say, well, his parents didn't like her, and they don't know that for sure. But his parents apparently weighed in on his marriage choice because he was so young, and so was she. It was their responsibility to advise their son. If they thought he was making a mistake, that was their job to tell him they thought he was making a mistake. For this reason, animosity developed between the families. And when you marry into a black family, you do not become an enemy of a black mother. I don't care who you are. And if that black mother does not approve of you, your job is to try to make her see that you are worthy of her child. Because she's not going to change her mind just because you become an enemy. Because she'll fight you every step of the way. In the African American culture, we're big on doing what's fair and what's right. But in other people's culture, they are doing what's going to help them and their people. They don't look out at other people and think, I'm going to do right by those black people. They don't look at it like that. They look at it as, I'm looking out for my people. Those black people can look out for themselves. So it looks like they support certain black people because they see them as the path of least resistance. We can get those black people in. And then they're not going to be paying attention to what we're doing so we can slide things in under the radar for our people. Voting and you're not a citizen. Driving around with driver's license. Getting all kinds of benefits and you're illegal. But that's what happens when you're dealing with black people who are not looking out for the best interest of their people but are trying to curry favor with somebody else. So we're making friends with people based on how they look and how we think they feel about us, but they may not feel about us the way we think they feel about us. Their culture is for them to look out for themselves and each other. This particular lesson happened in Los Angeles, but this is a lesson for black people. These people operate in their own interest. And if we get in the way, they just finesse their way around us and we let them pass. Maybe because of how they look or how nice they pretend to be. But they are operating in their own self-interest. And that's the lesson. Okay. Thank you for listening. Let me know what you think about this. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.